This video will present topics of murder, violence, and death. It is thus unsuitable for all audience. Viewer discretion is advised. Saint Achilles, also known as Achilles of Larissa, not to be confused with the Greek mythological character, is a Christian saint venerated in both Eastern Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church. While historical details about his life are somewhat limited, especially considered the early period in which he lived, there are accounts and traditions that provide insights into his life and veneration. Here's a brief biography of Saint Achilles. Saint Achilles is believed to have been born in the city of Larissa, located in Thessaly, Greece, during the late Roman period likely the 3rd century AD. Little is known about his life, but it is said that he was born into a pagan family and grew up amidst the prevalent pagan culture of his time. According to tradition, Achilles was drawn to Christianity through the preaching and witnesses of early Christian missionaries or through his personal encounters with Christians Inspired by their teachings and the example of their lives, he eventually converted to Christianity, embracing the faith wholeheartedly. After his conversion, Achilles dedicated himself to the service of Christ and to spread the gospel. He is said to have been ordained as a bishop, likely in Larissa or near nearby Christian communities, and he is took on the responsibility of shepherding local Christian flocks. As Bishop Achilles would have been involved in various aspects of pastoral care, including preaching, teaching, administering the sacraments, and providing spiritual guidance to the faithful. His leadership would have been particularly important during a time of persecution and upheaval for the early Christian community. Saint Achilles is best known for his martyrdom, which occurred during a period of intense persecution of Christians under the Roman Emperor Diocletian, likely in the early 4th century AD. Details of his martyrdom vary in different accounts, but it is generally believed that Achilles faced persecution for his Christian faith and refused to renounce Christ. Tradition holds that Achilles injured various forms of torture and suffering for his refusal to offer sacrifices to the Roman gods or to renounce his Christian belief. Eventually, he was executed possibly by beheading or another method of execution common during that time. After his martyrdom, Saint Achilles was venerated as a martyr and saint by the local Christian community in La Risa and eventually beyond. His tomb became a site of pilgrimage and his memory was honored through prayers, liturgies, and the veneration of his lyrics, relics. Excuse me. Over time, Saint Achilles' reputation for holiness and his intercessory power grew and he became regarded as a powerful advocate for those in need. Numerous miracles were attributed to his intercessory powers, including healings, deliverance from danger, and conversions of non-believers. Achilles' feast day is celebrated on May 15th in the Eastern Orthodox Church and on May 12th in the Roman Catholic Church. He is often depicted in iconography as a bishop holding a palm branch symbolizing his martyrdom and surrounded by other christian martyrs and saints while historical documentation about saint achilles may be limited his memory continues to be honored and his example of faith and courage inspires christianity to this day he remains a beloved saint in the Christian tradition 
and revered for his steadfastness in the face of persecution and his devotion to Christ. Saint Achilles, also known as Achilles of Larissa, is a venerated Christian saint in both the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church. While his iconography may not be as prevalent or detailed as some more widely recognized saints, there are still several traditional elements associated with his depiction in religious art. Here's a brief list of St. Achilles's iconography. St. Achilles is often depicted as a martyr, reflecting his status as one who suffered persecution and death for his Christian faith. This may be symbolized by the presence of instruments of torture or execution, such as a sword, axe, or other weapons, indicating the manner of his passing. St. Achilles is sometimes depicted wearing the attire of a bishop, signifying his role as the bishop in the early Christian church. This typically includes a bishop stole, a morphorian, draped over his shoulders, and a bishop's mitre on his head. As with many Christian martyrs, St. Achilles is often shown holding a palm branch, which symbolizes victory over death and martyrdom. The palm branch is a traditional Christian symbol associated with martyrdom and triumph of faith. Since St. Achilles is also known as Achilles of Larissa, his iconography may include elements associated with the city of Larissa, such as its architectural features or symbols representing the region. St. Achilles may also be depicted holding a scroll or book symbolizing his role as a teacher and preacher of the Christian faith. This reflects also his status as a bishop and his commitment to spreading the gospel. In some depictions, St. Achilles may be shown in scenes of invocation or intercession, where he de is depicted alongside other saints or figures praying or beseeching divine intervention on behalf of believers. While less common, St. Achilles may also be associated with the attributes of healing, given his reputation for performing miracles and interceding on behalf of the sick and afflicted. In Eastern Orthodox icons, St. Achilles may be depicted in a more traditional style, often with a halo surrounding his head and with inter inscriptions, excuse me, or symbols indicating his status as a saint or martyr. It's important to note that specific iconography of St. Achilles may vary dependent on the artistic tradition, cultural context, and regional variations within Christian art. St. Achilles is attributed with numerous miracles though specific examples may vary dependent on the sources. Here's a brief description of some accounts of miracles associated with St. Achilles. St. Achilles is believed to have performed numerous healing miracles both during his lifetime and posthumously. These miracles often involve the restoration of health to the sick and afflicted. Specific examples include healing the blind, According to some accounts, St. Achilles restored sight to the blind through his prayers or by laying hands on them. St. Achilles is also said to have cured individuals suffering from various illnesses and ailments, ranging from fevers to the more serious ailments. Like many other early Christian saints, St. Achilles is also believed to have possessed the power to cast out demons and liberate individuals from demonic possessions. St. Achilles is also credited with protecting people from harm and danger, often through his intercessory powers or miraculous interventions. 
This includes saving people from persecution. St. Achilles may have intervened to protect Christians from persecution or violence, shielding them from harm during times of religious oppression. Some traditions attribute St. Achilles with the ability to calm storms, prevent earthquakes, or otherwise protect communities from natural disasters as well. After his martyrdom, St. Achilles is also believed to have continued performing miracles through his relics or spiritual intercession. This includes healing through relics. Miraculous healings are said to have occurred through the veneration of St. Achilles' relics, which with individuals experience physical or spiritual healing by coming into contact with his remains. There are also accounts of St. Achilles appearing to individuals in dreams or visions, offering guidance, comfort, or miraculous assistance. St. Achilles is also associated with the conversion of non-believers through the demonstration of his miraculous powers and the witness of his faith. <clears throat> this includes converting skeptics. St. Achilles is said to have converted skeptics and opponents of Christianity by demonstrating the reality of divine power through his miracles. Some accounts also suggest that Achilles' miracles played a role in converting local authorities or rulers to cease persecuting Christians and to embrace the Christian faith for themselves. These were, of course, just a few examples of the miracles attributed to St. Achilles. Over time, his reputation for performing miracles contributed to his veneration as a saint within the Christian tradition. The process of canonization or the official recognition of a person as a saint within the Catholic Church typically involves several stages and can vary somewhat dependent on historical content and specific circumstances. Here's a general overview of the process of canonization for St. Achilles. The process often begins with local veneration of the individual as a saint within a particular community or region. In the case of St. Achilles, this would have involved the veneration of his relics, the celebration of his feast day, and the transmission of stories and traditions about his life and miracles within the Christian community, particularly in Larissa and the surrounding areas. A formal investigation into his life, virtues, and reputation of holiness of the individual would have then occurred, which would have been initiated by the local bishop or religious authorities. This investigation seeks to gather evidence of the person's sanctity, including accounts of miracles attributed to their intercession and testimonies from witnesses. If the local investigations yield positive results about the person, it is deemed to have lived a life of heroic virtue, the individual would be declared as venerable by the Pope. This is the first step towards canonization and recognizes that the person lived a life of exemplary holiness. After being declared venerable, the individual must be associated with at least two miracles attributed to their intercession, typically one for beatification and the other for canonization. These miracles are religiously, rigorously, excuse me, investigated by the church to ensure they meet the criteria for being miraculous, instantaneous, and unexplained by natural causes. One of the necessary miracles, excuse me, once the necessary miracles have been verified, the individual may be beatified in a public ceremony presided over a high rank in church official, such as a cardinal or the pope. 
Beatification confirms the title of blessed upon the individual and allows for limited veneration, typically within the local church or religious order. Finally, and if there is an additional miracle that are attributed to the individual's intercession after beatification and their sanctity is further confirmed, the Pope would then proceed with canonization. Canonization involves a formal declaration by the Pope that the individual is a saint and worthy of universal veneration within the Catholic Church. In the case of St. Achilles, as with many early Christian saints, the process of canonization would have been less formalized compared to later centuries. Local veneration, the transmission of stories and traditions, and the recognition of his holiness by Christian communities would have played a significant role in his eventual canonization. Additionally, the specific details of St. Achilles' canonization process may vary depending on traditions and practices of the Eastern Orthodox Church, which also venerates him as a saint. Information about the relics associated with St. Achilles is somewhat limited, as it is often the case with early Christian saints. However, relics traditionally play a significant role in the veneration of saints within the Christian tradition. And there are some accounts and traditions regarding the relics of St. Achilles. Relics associated with St. Achilles may include his bodily remains, such as his bones or other bodily relics, as well as objects or artifacts believed to be associated with him, such as clothing or personal items. Given that St. Achilles is believed to have been from Larissa, Greece, it is possible that some of his relics are located in or near the city. Historically, the tombs or burial sites of martyrs often become places of pilgrimage and veneration, and it is possible that relics associated with St. Achilles would have been preserved and venerated in churches or shrines in Larissa. Other relics of saints were often preserved and venerated in monasteries, churches, and other religious institutions. Some of the relics associated with St. Achilles would have been found in such locations, particularly in regions where his veneration is strong. Some relics of saints, particularly those of widespread veneration, would have been housed in the Vatican itself or other churches in Rome. While St. Achilles may not have been as widely known or venerated as some other saints, it is possible that relics associated with him may have found their way to Rome over the centuries. The availability of relics for public viewing can vary depending on the specific relic and its location. Relics may be publicly displayed for veneration on certain occasions, such as feast days or special liturgical celebrations, or they would be housed in reliquaries within the church or shrines, where they can be venerated by pilgrims and visitors. In some cases, relics may be accessible for public viewing on a regular basis, while in other cases, they may only be displayed on special occasions or by appointment. Additionally, some relics may be housed in private collections or kept in restricted areas of churches or religious institutions where they may not be readily accessible to the public. If you are interested in viewing relics associated with St. Achilles, you may wish to research churches, monasteries, or religious institutions in Larissa, Greece, or other regions associated with his life and veneration. Additionally, contacting local churches or religious authorities may provide information about the availability of these relics for public viewing and veneration.